Hello, this is Greg Zolfan from SharePoint Maven, and today I would like to explain to you the difference between private and public Office 365 groups. Uh, I covered what Office 365 groups are in uh, my previous videos, so feel free to check it out. Uh, but just to give you a brief overview, Office 365 group is essentially uh, a security group, membership group that is tied to the various applications uh, that you have as part of your Office 365 subscription. So when you create one of those groups, you get a SharePoint site, you get um, a task management tool and planner, you get a calendar in Outlook, uh, you uh, get uh, Microsoft Teams, as well as the uh, distribution list uh, in Outlook as well. Uh, and everything is tied uh, through this Office 365 group, through the membership, through the single uh, membership, essentially. Now, when you create a new Office 365 group, and there are many, many different places where you can create it from, you can create it from SharePoint, you can create it from Outlook, Planner, Teams, uh, et cetera. It doesn't really matter where you start, you end up with the same thing. Uh, but when you create a group, no matter where you start, you are asked to provide, you know, to set a, um, you know, a privacy setting. So in this case, uh, I'm creating a, a new uh, group, uh, a new team site, but obviously I have an Office 365 group attached. And um, just uh, giving it a, a test name. Uh, but one of the questions you asked, I mean, pretty much the only question you need to answer is uh, the privacy setting. And there are two settings available, a private and public. And I would like to clarify to you today what is the difference between the two. So when you create a private, site uh, essentially what that means is that i as a group owner have to let you in you you cannot just join you know or see any content uh, on the site or any other applications you cannot chat with teams or access the calendar unless uh, i invite you in and make you a member all right public means on another hand it's pretty much free lunch for everyone all right you can join freely you can join the group if you wish uh and leave the group if you wish and there is really no um you know permission if you will uh pretty much you can join the group yourself uh no need to obtain my permission as a group owner and you can access everything the group has to offer again uh, and um, can add either delete anything on the site um, a calendar planner teams you know etc so by default, by default, it's private, uh, and I kind of agree with that uh, setting, with that approach. I think majority of your uh, groups that you will create will be private for obvious reasons. Uh, but essentially, that's where you set it up, all right? Uh, now, um, in case if you already created a site, um, so here we go, I created a group site, a team site, and it's a private group, you can actually change the private, uh, the, the privacy setting once the group has been created. So in this case, I have created um, yeah, a training uh, site, and it happens to be a private, I set it up as private group. So what that means, if I go to site permissions, um, essentially all my group members are in members group, uh, all my group owners, that's me at the moment, um, you know, I in uh, owners group, makes sense. Uh, but you can also change and adjust it. Uh, you can convert private to public and vice versa. So the way you do it would be, I mean, again, there are different places where you can do it from. You can do it from Outlook as well, but in our case, we're already in SharePoint. So I'm going to click the gear icon, site information. And over here, if you notice, uh, it says, private so uh, I'm going to make it public and hit save and now uh, it tells us it's a public group uh, just to let you know what happened right now uh, if I go to uh, to gear icon site uh, permissions again you will notice that uh, now on the site members I get everyone except external users the main group automatically got embedded into the members group. And hopefully that makes sense because we made this group public. We made this group public, uh, which means now everyone can just pretty much, uh, you know, see the content and add, add a delete content on the site. Uh, and essentially that's why we now have this group here. Uh, and again, if I uh, change this uh, back, um, let me go back to my group again and change uh, from public to private again. 
So it tells us it's public. Uh, we're going to make it private and I'm going to hit save. So I'm pretty much uh, uh, making it private again. Here we go. It tells us it's private. And if I now go back uh, to site permissions, uh, my everyone group is gone. All right. And uh, essentially, that makes sense. I mean, everyone lost access uh, to the site again. Uh, pretty much, I uh, now as a group owner, uh, I have to let people in uh, into into my group. And by the way, I mean, I showed it to you in the context of a site. Uh, but once you make the let's say private group uh, public, what that means that uh, all the um, uh, you know essentially all, uh, all the users, all the employees uh, will also be able to access uh, other uh, applications that are part of the group. You know, uh, they will be able to join uh, and uh, chat in Teams and you know manage tasks in Planner and access calendar and so on. All right. So hopefully. Um, this makes sense, and hopefully you learned something new today. Uh, but the good thing is, once the group is created, you can change the uh, privacy setting and convert it uh, either to, you know, from private to public or vice versa, which is very nice. All right. Again, uh, thank you very much for your attention, uh, and uh, hope to see you again on my YouTube channel as well as my blog, SharePointMaven.com. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.